We're now at a position where we can create our start to create our new show. We've had a quick look around the interface, so we get a we've got a, a reasonable idea how Pictures to XE works. So when I opened up Pictures to XE, it's set up in a way that um, it will open up the previous project that I was working on. So this is uh, what we've been looking at previously. So to create a new show, we need to go to File, New, and we it's, it's prompting us to put a, a name in here. So I'll call this Air Display. And the aspect ratio is going to be 16 by 9, which is suitable for full HD TV projector or the 4K TV aspect ratio. You can actually change it to different aspect ratios or a custom setting where you can input the pixel dimensions if you wish. But I wish this to be 16 by 9. So it will fully fill the screen of any potential full HD or 4K monitor. Okay. Now we haven't actually saved that file. It's just setting the project up in the way that um, the initial settings. Talking of initial settings, let's just go to settings, preferences, and this determines how pictures to XE behaves. Uh, so we've got additions. So this is the, it shows you the difference between different the deluxe and the essentials editions. Project. Auto recovery, it's best to have these selected. Load last saved project on startup, which is why we've, we had that, the, uh, the previous show on display. Show full slide duration. In the timeline, you'll notice that uh, you've got the transition duration and you have the slide duration. The full slide duration just means that it will include the transition time as well as just the purely uh, full slide uh, view. This is to do with uh, keep f uh, full slide duration. If you have an embedded video, the video will keep on going even if the slide duration is less than the video. System, a few settings there you may, may wish to have a look at. We've got color profile manage uh, color management here and it's saying sRGB is recommended, but it, you can set it up to Adobe 99A8 uh, RGB or a custom one if you wish. But I'd suggest you just leave that on sRGB and enable color management. Again, it's recommending you do that. But since we've already saved all our, all our images as an sRGB uh, in an sRGB color space, Pictures to XE will rec uh, recognize those color profiles and show the colors and tones to best advantage. Timeline. So more settings there you may wish to have a look at. Toolbars. In the toolbars up here and down here you can change what tools are visible if you wish. Okay. So there's a range of tools that you can have visible if you wish. Editors and templates. Okay, so those are the preferences. And again, you can have a quick look through them if you wish. But we're dealing with a project now. So we need to set up the project options. So we've got project options here, or you can get it at them from project options there. And here we have the main project options main. Aspect ratio, which is what we've already set. The default slide duration. All of these can be changed individually on the slide, but I'm going to just change that to five seconds, apply to all slides initially. If the slide doesn't fill the entire frame, then this determines the color that you'll see surrounding or where the image isn't visible. So I tend to have that set to black, but you can change it to whatever color you wish. Audio. We can add audio tracks here, but uh, there's easier ways of adding audio than within here. But you can control very accurately any audio tracks that have been added to the show in here. This is to do with after you've created the Pictures to XE show, how it behaves. Actions after the last slide, close the show. 
and there's other you can repeat the show so if it, if you want to maybe demonstrate something over and over and over repeat the show well it's best usually you want to close the show if you're doing a manually projected demonstration like my intro video uh, showing the pictures to XE you want the next slide to appear when you want it to appear on a, a key press of the, the keyboard so that is where you want that to be checked wait for a key press to show the next slide if you want to automatically advance to the music you don't want that selected you want it to automatically advance so for this particular show we want that deselected okay and there's a few other options you may wish to uh, select there here we've got show navigation bar again this is to do with the final XC show sometimes it's useful to have the navigation bar you know which allows you to pause the show uh, down here but for a full uh, for a show of this sort you don't really want a navigation bar showing all the time so I deselect that for this particular show transitions so this is where we can apply different transitions you can see there's the dissolve the hourglass page and for each one of these that you choose you've got options to manage the way that transition works I tend to stick to dissolve because I've seen some shows where people have used every single one of these transitions and your focus turns away from the images that they're trying to show to I wonder what sort of transition he's going to use next so I tend to leave it at dissolve and for the show that I'm going to be doing like aircraft in flight then it's probably best to have a, a fairly snappy transition you don't want a, a gentle fade which is more appropriate for landscapes and flowers and things like that but we can change all of these individually on slide later on if we wish screen again this is how it's going to be displayed uh, when it's finally rendered full screen I wish the image to fully fill the frame of the television the projector or you can, uh, could have it in a windowed with borders and then you have the pixel dimensions that you can select this is the maximum size that it will project to but we'll have that full screen so it will fully fill whatever pixel screen dimension um, you use default okay so I can change custom fonts and things advanced so we've mainly set up the the slideshow or the project options as to how we want it select OK we need we need to save this project we haven't added anything to it but we've done the initial setup so I'm going to go to file save as we need to go to the folder that we've created for this show so C drive air display PTE show and there we have air display PTE I think I'll just add to that simple show because we can create a more complex show a bit later on okay so air display simple show save so we can now we're now at a stage where we can start to add the content and if we go to our let's just set this up so on C drive remember we created the folders air display music exact size images with border which is what we want to populate this particular show with PT show which is where we've just gonna save the show and where we'll save the final XE show and some video files I've included a couple of video files here you can select one press play so within the mini viewer we can appreciate video files music ok 
okay all the, all images so we can see what we want to introduce into the project so all this is the source data this is the show so we need to add the images here and we need to add the audio here so let's go to the music and we'll add the audio and I've chosen this one here levitation I'm going to drag that into the audio timeline there now we can see the timeline it starts at zero seconds five seconds ten seconds and where I've dropped the music it's about 13 seconds into the show to correct that all you need to do is click and drag until it starts at the beginning and if we go along the timeline drag it along there we can see it stops at about eight second uh, eight minutes 20 seconds or so so that's the duration of the show if we just sequence it to the music we can now add the pictures so go to the folder with the pictures in we can let's just change this to slide view okay because this is otherwise we can it, it can change the way like, oh I'll just give you a demonstration okay so on, on timeline if I add a picture add another picture you can see that suddenly add another picture that uh, the duration of that slide just suddenly changed by adding images you can see that one just squeezed in there it does this if you're in timeline view if you're in slide view it won't you won't get that problem so I'll just select that one shift select that one delete it will only delete it from the show it will not delete it from your computer so now we can click and drag click and drag and they will honor the duration of the default slide duration five second uh, five minutes sorry five seconds five seconds and there's the transition duration a b half a second okay so you can keep on doing that dragging them down you can click uh, shift key click and drag a bunch of them down I'll just select that one select the end one delete so they're removed or we could just select them all control a and just drag them all into the show now there's 300 and several 21 pictures or so so now it's populating pictures to XE with all of the images that we, we prepared if we go to the timeline we can see that with five seconds apiece that is where the music runs out and we've got loads and loads of pictures extra and it's still trying to generate these in fact I've actually uh, created 551 here so that's uh, with a border okay so one of the first things we need to do now is to cull the uh, the images that we don't think will fit and to sort them out into an order that we think will be good for the show so to do that we can go to select slides and go to this like uh, light table view we can change the size of these thumbnails if we go here we can make them smaller or make them larger okay we can move images around here so say we wanted that image maybe at the beginning we can click and drag that to the beginning of the show okay so it looks like aeroplanes are taking off or maybe that one okay begin the show if we don't want an image maybe select the image press delete and it will disappear from here not from your computer if you think there's a quite a few images select shift delete and they will all disappear from the show okay you can select uh, control give me the control key press and then move a bunch of images 
around so you can sort images out okay once you've got them into a sequence we can then go back to the timeline and see how they fit in with the uh, the music you may find that you want to add a blank slide at the beginning of the show so I'm going to right click this is the beginning image right click insert a blank slide and that has appeared here okay so it's probably best to go to the slide view move that to the beginning of the show you can see we've got a duration of five minutes uh, five seconds here this one has changed to one second I'm just going to cl click in there and put that back to well since that's going to be an intro, intro um, slide I'm going to make that uh, 10 seconds say there we go I'm just using the up and down arrow key on the computer to update the duration of the, the slide here we'll maybe put that down to maybe three seconds or so okay we can go back to the timeline and you can see that we've got a blank slide we're into the beginning slide okay and maybe we want a nice gradual transition from the black slide here but at the moment it's only half a second so we can actually click in here and drag that if we wish if we want to make that slide longer we can actually click in here in this particular slide within the slide and drag that and all the slides to the right move proportionally okay if you just click in here you'll find that just the left and right slide the durations change proportionally okay but if you select here you can change the duration of that slide and all the rest of the slides move to compensate okay so now we've got an intro slide which we, we could probably add a title to okay I'll do that shortly but we've still got too many images so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cull a load of the images so that we just have sufficient to fill the the show and then I'll come back to you okay now I've got rid of most of the images I'd have done this with a bit more care if I was doing a proper show but for demonstration purposes we can see that the music ends here and this is the last um, slide so what I want to do is to add maybe a title or an end title to this slide so I'll just select that and drag the slide so it's a, it's a, a more a, a longer slide so we can add a title and maybe a black slide afterwards so I'll right click on the image insert a blank slide and that appears here I'll just drag that to the end there okay and maybe we, we can drag the blend the transition like that okay so we've got we've decided on a, an end slide all the intermediate slides and the beginning okay so if we select here play what I'd like to do is introduce a title into that slide there so a simple title with that slide selected so I'll move the cursor over that slide we can go to objects and animation now these are the controls where we can do all sorts of amazing things we can pan we can zoom rotate we can change the opacity we can blur we can add video masks text more images shapes Okay, we can change the size of this view in here. I'll just change the magnification there. I'm going to leave it at 25 for now. We can see that this image is selected because it has handles around it. And down here, this is the image, this is the object that is selected. Okay, it's the picture. And these are attributes of that picture. Okay, it tells you even where the image has come from. Remember, these are just links to the actual file. So if I want to add text, this 
program has the ability to create um, parent-child relationships so that if I was to maybe scale this image and it had a child attached to it like a text object then the text object would change shape and size and in relation to the way the picture was changing. Now if you want the text to have its own life as it were we need to make sure that a parent is not selected so I'm just going to click here and all that information disappears so if I now click on the text and I say I'll be covering that in more detail in a, a future video but we can see that we've got a text object appear here and in here it's prompting us to give it a title I'll call this a display and of course it hasn't got a spell checker so I'll just do it myself. So there we've got our display. We can change the size of this by dragging the handles, change the position of it. We can change the font. So you've got a load of different fonts here. We can change the color. Maybe we want a yellow, maybe say. Something like that. You can change these sliders individually. Okay. Bold. Italics. Underline. The alignment. Spacing. So there are quite a few things you can do to that um, title, that text. Now then. <clears throat> I'll just introduce you to some of the power of this particular object, object and animation pane here. Down here we have a timeline. Now at the moment, this is the timeline for the text. You can see we've got a, uh, a keyframe has been added here. So whatever attributes we have here will be applied to that text all the way through until it fades out, you can see here, that is the fade out duration, that is the fade in duration. And we can actually, you know, well, you can see that the fade in, fade out duration, okay. And this is where a lot, well, it's indicating whereabouts on the timeline something will happen. Now then, say we want this air display to fade in after a certain duration of showing this slide. Now at the moment it's fully opaque and if we go to animation we can see that the opacity is 100%. If I was to change that to zero the text is, is still there but it's fully transparent. If I select here right click on it clone the keyframe okay we're moving that keyframe down the timeline and it still has the attributes of this opacity zero. Okay. If I clone that keyframe again, clone the keyframe, move it to there, but now change the opacity to 100, the text reappears. And that reappearing is going to happen between here, where we had zero opacity, to 100% opacity. And if we just select at the beginning, we can see the effect now. Play starts to fade in, fully rendered. Okay. We could have that title fade out a little bit further along. So I'm going to right click, clone to where I think it needs to fade out. Or we could maybe blur it out. So let's try a blur out. So from there to there, the text is going to be fully rendered, yeah, fully visible. Right click, clone keyframe, drag it to there, and I'm going to blur it by 200, say. Might have to go a bit more than that because it's a yellow color. Okay, something like that. And maybe clone the keyframe 
Oh, in fact, we can also change the opacity as well. So I'm going to change that to zero. Okay. So now, select back here at the beginning of the timeline. Play should fade in. And then blur and fade out here. Okay, and then we're into the next slide. Right, so we've added the title. Let's just close that down. And now we're back in the, the normal view here. Move the cursor to the beginning. Let's play the what we've got so far in the mini viewer. Fade in. The title should appear. The title should disappear. And fade into the next slide. Okay. And so the slides will progress throughout the show. I'll just move to the end of the show. So this is where I've gone and created the last slide. Okay, I'll just drag that maybe to there. Okay, and I put a blank slide at the end. So we come maybe in here. Okay, where the cursor is in here, go to object and animation. Make sure that the uh, the image is not selected. So I'll just click away here. Okay, we can add a text. Call that the end. I'll, what I'll do here is I'm going to put the end here. Off screen. And just give you an idea as to what we can do here. And I'm going to create, so I'm going to right click on here, uh, add a keyframe. And the keyframe is going to appear here. I'm just going to drag that to maybe there. And there, so whatever is happening at this particular time, I can move this to maybe up there and just maybe expand it. Okay, so now if we go back to here, play, the end moves and it's expanding as well and it goes off screen. And maybe you want to put your, your name in there as well. So I've just selected away. Go to the text. Remember how you spell your name. So again, we can go to our animation, opacity zero, right click on the keyframe, clone keyframe, and maybe towards the end, clone keyframe, to 100% opacity, clone keyframe, to there, clone keyframe, and just fade it out or blur it to 200. So we'll go to the beginning, play, name should appear. And I'll just give you a quick idea as to how we can introduce a video as well. So I'm just selecting away. Here we have the video, add a video icon. Find our folder where the video is. Video files. So here's one. Select the video, open the file. And it should converted. Let's have a look, see if it does play. It's not behaving very well here. 
So I'll, I'll delete that. But anyhow, you can see how we've added text, uh, well, basically finished the show. So let's just go back to the beginning, have a, a final little play. I'm not going to play the whole thing through. Make sure they've got the cursor at the beginning. Play. Okay. So now we want to save the show. So we need to just save it, file, save. And now we want to publish the show. Okay, so we, we're creating a pictures to XE show. We've saved the, the project as a PTE show, but we haven't gathered together all the data into one file for presentation on another computer. So this is where we need to go to publish, ex executable file for the PC, or an executable file for the Mac, depending on the destination, what, what, what computer you're going to actually use to show the show. So the PC, I'm going to put it in the same folder, uh, display, PT show, and it's going to have an XE extension. Okay, so save. It's creating the show. That file will now be available to, um, you know, project the show. And that's how you create a simple show.